So I'm in this assets file. I'm trying to build the, the components I need for my rough storyboard sketch to make sense. And the first thing I need is a clean background. And I want to be happy with it. So I have kind of a reflection here. I can make that a little bit stronger, maybe set it at a different blending mode. Could be interesting. I think overlay works pretty well. And then maybe I want to play with the color a little bit. Maybe I want to dodge and burn it. So remember, you have all of these skills we've learned in compositing the first few assignments. Can be useful as we do this. And I can do some adjustments, play with the color balance. If I don't want it to be quite so pink. Make it a little more neutral in the mid-tones. A little less magenta. There we go, something like that. All right, so if that's my background, now what I want to do is select all those layers, including the gray behind it, and merge them together. So layer, merge layers, command E is the shortcut. And now that's my background plate. Nice and clean. I somehow lost my guide, but I can always get it back. Now, the reason I'm not cropping using the crop tool to just crop it to a, to a square is because there is stuff over here I might want to have suck into the, the mouth of the creature. There are assets I can use that are off of the frame. And if I crop, I'll lose those pixels. Also, most of my creature right now is hanging off of the frame. Okay, so right now I'm kind of cleaning up. So I'm going to call this the background. It's never, it's, that's always going to be there. It's going to be in every frame. Now I have the jelly bean. I got this, this mountain range, which I can clean up a little bit because all these things are going to get sucked into the mouth. But I'm just going to roughly clean it up with my lasso. Hmm. Should have worked. There we go. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll dim my, uh, my borders here and lock it. So I can see all of that asset as needed. All right, then this mountain these kind of rock crystals clean that up if there's something i want to fix i can fix it i'm just going to use the clone stamp at 100 percent and because i've stenciled it off it won't ever go beyond that. And I'll just repair that little part. So now I've got those mountains. Cotton candy. Let's move that down. Maybe stretch it a little bit. More cotton candy. Let's cut this out. And I should probably simplify more and more as I go. 
So maybe merge these two cotton candies together, maybe just erase away. I'll do 100% opacity, soft eraser, large. And just start kind of merging them into each other. And then maybe cut the bottom out a little bit of this background one. And then combine them together. Those individual stones are going to be a pain. All of these, I just need them to be a reasonable enough shape. So these stones that are cut out in different ways, I'm just going to make them look a little bit more stone-like as I cut them out. This is just for my animation purposes. And then maybe even chunk them into groups. So this will be one group that gets sucked in. So I command J, duplicate that. This will be another group that gets sucked in. You just have to think through it all, and then this will be the third group. And then just like the mountains, and then maybe I'll collapse those into each other a little bit. Now I have these separate assets that are making it. If I need to clean them up a little bit more, I can. And the reason I took my resolution down to begin with is so I don't get obsessive about the textures and the edge control. Because GIF animation is a different entity than the stuff we've been getting ready for printing. All right, so I've got those different entities. Clean up some edges. All of these are going to be useful. And to understand my assets to begin with makes animating easier. So digital art, because we can make perfect copies of things and then we can warp them, we can modify them, it's really more like stop motion, traditional stop motion animation where you use kind of puppets and you pose them and then take a photo then it is like hand-drawn cell animation because we're dealing with basically different characters on a stage that we can manipulate in different ways and every time we want to change their expression or change their pose we can make a duplicate of them and then move it what we don't want to do is ever lose those assets soften the bottom of my uh, cotton candy. Okay. So here, this is where it gets fussy and I don't need it all. So this is a drop shadow. And now I'm getting into character asset, assets. But my first panel just establishes a setting. So for right now, I'm going to put all the character stuff into one folder. Everything that relates to that character. By selecting all of those and then making a folder. Then I also have my smart object.
And is the character here, whoops, let's see, layer select by group. Is this character really so much better than just my PNG? No, not for these purposes. So really, I think I'm just going to simplify by getting rid of all of that and just use my smart object PNG character. But because it's a smart object, I'm really free to start scaling it. So for instance, in that panel, I can already build a keyframe where that character is just still in the environment. I think it's going to look something like this. It's going to be facing that way. It's probably going to be a little bit smaller. And there's not going to be any background. So what's a good position for it? That will be kind of its default. Maybe down in this corner. And then maybe I give it a drop shadow. Using the layer styles, spread it out. Make it very directional. There we go. Like so. Let's Thin that out a little bit. Now that will affect anything that's underneath my character. So that's pretty helpful. In fact, maybe I want to change the angle of that drop shadow to being almost directly overhead. Yeah. Okay, but simplifying the environment. All these raspberries... What did I do last? I think I did this. That looks okay. Then this. Does that look okay on its own? Looks okay, but let's merge it with this raspberry. So we've got these waffles. not need this. Then I've got the tree and I got the things at the base of the tree. All those are good on their own. And then I've got atmosphere. Oh, good old atmosphere. So what I'm going to do is move my character above all of these background assets and then maybe just put them behind the tree. So that's kind of one setup. I have foreground in front. I have my creature in the middle ground on top of this kind of landscape, right? I don't need to worry about having like individual raspberries on top because this is all going to go by very quickly in the animation. And now there's atmosphere, just layers and layers of it. And maybe it's helpful. I'm not going to use any of this clone stamping. I do like the vignetting. Let's see. I don't think this one's that helpful. So what I'm going to do is, that's overlay, that's soft light, that's soft light, that's overlay. I'm going to merge them together. These two that are soft light, I can merge together and just set to soft light. Then it works. The overlays I need to keep as overlays, soft light. So what I'm going to do is put them into a group and call them Atmosphere. So this is organizing my assets. Now what's great about that is if I wanted to, I could animate that. 
I can move